Hey yo, what is up everyone? It is the Alpha J of the Alpha J Show and welcome to Character Clash, a series on my channel where I compare two characters, look for their core traits, and see how I would write this character with a similar general premise. Bear in mind if anything I say is negated, wrong, or inaccurate because of a future episode, note the date that this was posted. So today I want to talk about Chloe, but better yet, I want to talk about the original Chloe, Remy Buxaplenty. I would imagine many of you getting ready to type that they are miles and miles apart and that I'm a terrible critic and that you should unsub. Fine. But I'm going to explain anyway. In the big fairy share scare, the perception of Chloe was that everything went well for her in her life, at least for the most part. For example, she found a teacher conference day, she spoke with the president, she has a petting zoo, she speaks many languages, and most importantly, she was granted fairy godparents. And if we count meta things, she gets airtime with the main character of the show. For those of you who keep track of the show, let's go back to the episode titled Fairy Fairy Quite Contrary, the first appearance of Remy Bucks Plenty in this series. Now, how did that go? Well, Remy had a plane, he brought out a theater, he beat Timmy at an arcade game, and saved the Crimson Chin. The latter two being things that Timmy is usually interested in. Some would argue that he's actually pretty good in. He is rich and he can buy whatever he wants. If you look at the other episode, Operation Fun, which is an episode where Remy Buxaplenty and Timmy Turner are in the same boot camp, because of Remy's wealth, he doesn't get the same treatment as Timmy. The difference between Chloe and Remy are probably, in my opinion, the critical errors that Chloe has that Remy does not. First of all, it was made very clear in the first episode he was in that he is miserable. In fact, his parents Parents don't pay attention to him, to the point where some may believe he masks or bottles his pain with his money. I mean, at that age, you want some attention, any attention, and if your own parents don't give it to you, then you're most likely going to seek it. Sure, they'll never bring up that dark concept in this show, but it gives you that factor needed to bring me to my second point. Secondly, he already has a fairy godparent, one that matches him quite nicely, Wandissimo, a fairy that at the time already had a relationship with Wanda and to an extent Cosmo, so when bringing in this character it seemed very natural. I understand that the show has done the whole bringing in the new character what, three times, four times or so? But the point is, the integration was a natural process. We also got to see the character's personality through their actions. In the Big Fairy Stair Scare, Jorgen, Crocker, and Timmy's parents tell us how great Chloe is, instead of letting us see it through her actions. This makes it seem like the writers want us to give the impression that we should like Chloe. And if we don't like Chloe, then too bad, because she's perfect and you should like her. And this never works. There's a difference between the roles of Remy and Chloe, yes, one is supposed to be liked and the other hated. Another glaring difference is, based off of what I've watched, Chloe's parents have not been mentioned. Confirmed at the time of recording this and writing this, when it comes to fairy odd parents, to my knowledge, the only kids that we get to see with fairies on a permanent basis is Timmy and Remy. Yes, Chester and Tootie both had fairies, but it wasn't for a permanent time, to our knowledge. Both of them get fairies from being miserable and ignored by their parents, and it does feed into their not-so-good personalities. They aren't 100% the same, but they both have traits that can be attributed to not having the best childhood. So in a way, Remy, the rich kid, is just as relatable as Timmy, the loser. Chloe, on the other hand, comes off as the girl who's always on top, like a rich kid on the outside. In Girly Squirly, she's the only one who seems interested in not only participating, but leading and earning the badges in her scout group. On two occasions with Monsters and Jorgen von Strangle, she comes on top. Now when you see Jorgen, you usually think he's this big tough guy that no one can beat easily. And I could partially blame Seasonal Rock, but Jorgen shouldn't be this easy to flip over, and here she is just doing that. Remy never overstayed his welcome. Remy is a good antagonist, but not so much to be a main antagonist. I wouldn't want to see him on every single episode, especially for a non-story arc episodic show like this. He does get too whiny and is trying to be bad so desperately. He works as a great side antagonist, or better yet, someone trying to accompany a much stronger villain. I can see Remy teaming up with the Pixies or Foop having a powerful duo. The chemistry between Chloe and Timmy's parents bring me back to It's a Wishful Life, where Timmy wished that he was never born. The only change that they made was that she's a female, and then she became wildly successful. I'm talking about the episode It's a Wishful Life, by the way. Maybe the Fairy Odd Pants crew are responding to that criticism now that I think about it. I can't necessarily say that the girl in It's a Wishful Life would be the same as Chloe, because the girl in It's a Wishful Life would rich and was a songwriter upon many other things but that only came about because Timmy was never born but here Timmy is born and we get somewhat of the same character 
and somewhat of the same chemistry with Timmy's parents. So to close, they are different in the following ways. Their initial perception, the reason they get their fairy godparents, their relationships around them, their inner and outer shells, their justified perfection, and their role on the show. If I were to write a character who has this plethora of great traits, I would give this character a few bad traits that balance the character a bit. If you wanted to write a character like this, my advice to you, have their outside character be perceived as near perfect, but their inner character be somewhat of a mess or broken. It gives the audience the validation that we can see this character and think, hey, that person is just like me because none of us is perfect. Sure, we may see people in real life and think they are, but everyone has an internal war from the richest of kids to the average kid that no one understands. So this was my first character clash segment on the Alpha J show. Let me know how I did and which character you personally like better. I'm open to all opinions in the comments below. I know I have a strike, but I recently opened up a separate channel exclusively for live streaming called Alpha Live. Now there's many ways to find it other than the description below. I also have it on the side of my channel banner and as an annotation on the screen. That's three ways to find it. I highly encourage you to be there. I respond to questions. I try to make it fun. I try to make it entertaining and who knows? You never know who you will see on there. That's Alpha Live in the description as an annotation on the screen and at my channel homepage right on the banner, official live stream exactly where it will be shown on the screen. And as always, I hope your time is well spent, and Alpha out. Johnny Tess. Whether you love it or hate it, you cannot deny the success that it had on Cartoon Network. The show started off over 10 years on Kids WB, and after a few seasons, the rest of the series aired on Cartoon Network. The series went for about six seasons, which many other cartoons can't say the same. The